Welcome to The Long and the Short, a show where you can expect an honest take on trading, something you won't hear elsewhere. I'm your host, Sandeep Rao. In our last episode, we explored the fascinating concept of overnight drift, that strange but powerful idea that markets often move the most when they are closed. Prices gap up or down overnight rather than inching along during regular trading hours. Today, we'll build on that theme by diving into another timeless idea, trend following. This isn't just some new trading concept. In fact, it's the opposite. It's been there for centuries and it's still going strong in many ways. Whether you are a long-term investor or a short-term trader, trend following has something for everyone. If you understand how it works, it can be the backbone of a systematic, resilient approach to markets. So let's dig in. As I often like to do, let's begin with that one name that quietly shaped the entire philosophy of systematic, rules-based trend following, long before computers, algorithms or the famous market wizards. I'm talking about Richard Donchain. Yes, there were a few before Richard Donchain, but it was he who pioneered rules-based trend following. He was born in 1905 in Hartford, Connecticut to Armenian immigrant parents who traded in Oriental carpets. Don Chen's story began far from Wall Street. His parents had fled Western Armenia under the Ottoman rule and built a new life in America. A bright student, Don Chen graduated from Yale with a degree in economics and later earned an MBA from MIT Sloan. His first job wasn't in finance at all. He worked as an assistant in his family's rug business. But fate had other plans. One day, he picked up a book that would change his life forever. Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, the legendary account of Jesse Livmore. The book captivated him and soon the fascination with markets took hold. In his early years, Don Chain was a fundamental investor, studying earnings, analyzing balance sheets and hunting for value. But the market crash of 1929 was a turning point. Losing much of his savings, he became obsessed not just with why prices moved, but how they moved. In 1933, he joined the Wall Street firm Hemphill, Noyce & Co. as a securities analyst. Like most of his peers, he relied on economic data and fundamentals. But he began to notice something that others overlooked. That price itself carried its own logic and its own pattern. A year later, he captured these early insights in his 20 trading guides, a slim set of principles that quietly marked the start of a new way of thinking. They combined Dow theory structure with pragmatic trading wisdom. Limit losses and right profits. Never add to a losing position. These were the seeds of systematic thinking. Rules distilled from experience, not emotion. After World War II, his path shifted again. Moving from Wall Street's calm to Chicago board's trade, Don Chain found himself amid shouting bids for corn, wheat and copper. These weren't companies with quarterly reports. They were living, breathing markets of supply and demand. And here, he realized something profound. Price itself could be studied, modeled and followed. That was the moment of transformation. A fundamentals-driven analyst became a pioneer of technical rules-based trading. And from that quiet revolution, the modern scientific approach to trend following was born. And that brings us to the question, what exactly is trend following? Trend following is a rules-based trading or investing strategy that seeks to capture profits from persistence in price trends in any asset, up or down. Rather than predicting where prices will go, it simply reacts to what prices are doing. Buying when an uptrend is confirmed, selling or shorting when a downtrend gets confirmed, and using strict rules to manage risk and exit. I would say it's one of the most intuitive and simplest forms of systematic trading, entirely based on price behavior. If I had to explain trend following from a more technical angle, it's really about comparing an asset's price to its own past prices. That past price could be an average of over a few weeks or months or maybe the highest price in a given period. Any historical reference point, that is. If today's price is higher than that past benchmark, the asset is said to be in an uptrend. If it's lower, it's trending down. Don Chain came up with two primary ways to identify trends. One is what is called the Don Chain Channel. It is a breakout-based indicator created by him, which essentially captures the price range, highest price of past 20 days and the lowest price of past 20 days. Now, 20 days here is a look-back period you could have it whichever way you want it, 5, 10, or 15, 20, whichever way. 
so it creates a band or a channel if price closes above the band you go long and your stop loss is the lower band and then go short if the price crosses the lower band and the upper band becomes your stop loss the second approach is to identify trends by comparing two averages instead of a current price versus a past reference for example in don chain's popular crossover strategy we compare a short term average say 5 day moving average with a longer term average like the 20 day average when the short term average moves above the long term it signals an uptrend when it dips below it points to a downtrend at this point i must add that don chain created these indicators way before computerized charts and data were available so in a way it's very simple in its calculations Today with easy compute available we have far robust indicators like Oliver 7 Super Trend which is a volatility adjusted trend following indicator and exponential moving averages which can be faster in identifying trends compared to simple moving averages that Don Chain used. Irrespective the key thing here is we are not comparing one stock to another or one asset class to another. We are only comparing an asset to itself through time to understand which direction it's moving. Let's take a look at both the indicators and apply them on Nifty on a daily time frame just the way Don Chain did. I tested three variants, a combination of long and short and then long and short separately. I would look at this table from bottom up, see the sharp fall long and short combined and others as well. This is just too bad. We have not even included transaction costs or slippages, all negative median P&Ls. Also look at the equity curves. Even the one that worked, that is the long only version, was in drawdown for 5 years. Now who would take that? It's tough. Just to be fair, even the diversified trend following program of the renowned Dunn Capital was in a drawdown for close to 4.5 years between 2003 and 2007. Such extended periods of drawdown are common among trend following programs. It's okay at a fund level but it's tough to manage at an individual level. So yes, Don Chain 20 on a daily time frame on Nifty fails badly. Now let's move to the 5 and 20 SMA cross on Nifty on a daily time frame. The blue line that you see is 5 SMA and the green line that you see is 20 SMA. Again, if we compare this to the previous Don Chain 20 backtest, this is a shade better but still not tradable. Median PNL is all negative again. Just 7500 points in 10 years in the long only model. No ways, that's again bad. Let's look at the equity curve again. The system, especially long only, seems to have picked up only post-2020. All in all, EMA crossover is just a shade better than Don Chain breakout system, but in totality, I wouldn't touch either of those. What you just saw was a simple illustration of how a 20-period Don Chain channel and a 5 into 20 simple moving average crossover work on an index like Nifty. So what's the takeaway? One, there are broadly two ways to identify a trend. One uses a breakout metric and the other relies on moving averages. Two, depending on the instrument or stock, one approach may work better than the other. Three, depending on how trends emerge in an asset, sometimes breakout indicators enter the trend earlier than moving average systems because crossovers take time for two averages to align. Sometimes it's the other way around as well. Four, the time frame matters a lot. Some instruments trend better on daily charts, while others show stronger patterns on lower time frames, say 4 hour bar chart, or even lower 1 hour time frames sometimes. 5. It's rarely a good idea to use indicators blindly with their default parameters. Don Chain may have chosen a 20 period look back for a reason back then, but that doesn't mean it's ideal for every market today. In short, the parameters and the timeframes I showed you in the backtest may not be perfect for Nifty. Every asset has its own personality. Some trend cleanly, others move in choppy cycles, and even strong trends can vary in pattern and structure. To make a trend following system more robust, you can experiment with different parameters and variations. For example, trade in only one direction, long only or short only. Use a single moving average instead of a crossover. Try an exponential moving average to emphasize recent prices. Replace moving averages altogether with a different indicator like Supertrend. Or even combine multiple time frames, trade on hourly charts but confirm signals using a daily trend. The combinations are endless. I'll cover many of these variations and some more advanced ideas in future episodes. But for now remember this. Trend following is simple in concept but not one size fits all. 
Each market stock or index needs its own parameters and tweaks. So far, we've looked at what trend following is and we explored two ways to identify trends as proposed by Richard Donchin. Now let me talk about the next idea that Richard Donchin pioneered. That's the idea of diversification across asset classes or commodities. When he moved from Wall Street to the Chicago Board of Trade after World War II, he entered a completely different world, the world of commodities. Here, instead of analyzing one company or one sector, he saw dozens of independent markets, corn, wheat, copper, sugar, cotton, each moving for entirely different reasons. He noticed something subtle but extremely powerful. When weather affected crop prices, metals barely moved. When industrial demand pushes copper prices up, wheat might fall. When bond prices rose, commodities often cooled off. This gave him an intuitive grasp of uncorrelated behavior, long before the word correlation became a staple in finance. In his own words, as quoted in the Commodities magazine 1980, he said, When I got into commodities, no one was interested in a diversified approach. There were cocoa men, cotton men, grain men. They were worlds apart. I was almost the first one who decided to look at all the commodities together. Nobody before had looked at the whole picture and then taken a diversified position with the idea of cutting losses short and going with a trend. By the mid-1940s, Richard Donchain had already made an intellectual leap, from studying companies to studying price behaviours. Now came the bold step, turning that idea into a business model. In 1948, Donchain founded Futures Incorporated, the world's first managed futures fund. A simple name for what was at that time a radical concept. He invited investors to pool their capital and instead of buying stocks or bonds, he traded futures contracts across multiple commodities, corn, wheat, cotton, copper, all through a single systematic approach. This was the birth of diversified rules-based investing. Each trade followed a clear principle, cut losses quickly, let profits run, and never let emotions interfere. It may sound obvious today, but back then the idea of using structured rules to manage money across dozens of volatile markets was revolutionary. That inside, the idea of diversification across uncorrelated assets became the cornerstone of what we now call managed futures. Now that brings us to the next question. Can we follow a similar managed futures approach in Indian markets? Now in the US, managed futures is a fund category or a strategy that trades multiple futures-based assets, both long and short. For instance, a trend following managed futures fund might hold positions in commodities, equities, currencies, interest rate futures, all traded simultaneously, each based on its own individual trend. In India, however, we face a few structural challenges. For starters, we simply don't have the same breadth of liquid future products across asset classes. Currency and interest rate derivatives are mostly unavailable, leaving us with just a handful of equity indices and a few commodities to work with. Do check out the video on financial products that we have in India. That's all is the universe in the listed space. Then there's also this institutional gap. In the US, UK and Europe, these strategies are managed by CTAs, commodity trading advisors or similar structures authorized to manage money through futures and derivatives. Interestingly, there's also a Society Generale CTA trend index that tracks top 10 trend following funds. In total, the approximate AUM of these trend programs could be close to $100 billion. That's just a ballpark, but it's still big. In India, while technically alternative investment funds, AIFs, can do something similar, the leverage restrictions and tax efficiencies and other restrictions on investing in derivatives outside of India make the structure impractical for a true managed futures style investing. But as I've said in the past, at an individual level, you could build something similar if you are a DIY trader. But realistically, it would still be a far cry from what institutional CTAs can do in the US or elsewhere. That said, since I am a glass half full kind of a person, I would ask, are we even making full use of what's already available here? I'll leave you with that thought. That brings me to the end of this episode on trend following. 
In the upcoming episodes, I'll dive deeper into different nuances of trend following, exploring what works and what doesn't, and how you can adapt these ideas to the Indian markets. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you in the next episode of The Long and the Short Show. Till then, trade safe and stay curious.